Hey, we view most of our pictures on screens, you know, on phones, tablets, computers, and this has become a new normal. Uh, but I love printed media. It's totally different and it gives a totally different flavor to the picture. Uh, I do most of my physical pictures in my dark room with old-fashioned silver gelatin way. <laughs> and it takes me forever to prepare one pitch, to get the lightning and whites and blacks and the shadows and details exactly the way I want. But I have a full control over it. The same way I can prepare my digital image in my Lightroom with a computer exactly the way I want. The same way when I go to my dark room, within the limits of my skills, I can do whatever I want to do. And I have a full control of it. Now, there's been a few occasions where I had a privilege to get my photos also printed in a book or publication. You know, I was asked to illustrate uh, uh, a few books. Uh, and then... Uh, some magazines have printed my images. And then there's been a few exhibitions where the exhibition organizers have printed the, the pictures on a, on a little publication. And, and this printing process is totally different than my silver gelatin printing because I have much less control over the outcome. And with this work, uh, I noticed that there is a tendency for my pictures to go muddy, dark, and lose a lot of shadows. Um, these art magazines are better, but especially these books, you know, we needed to go a couple of rounds to get the pictures right. And I'm still not fully happy with them. So I thought, I gotta get a hang of this, and I need to know better how to prepare my images for printing. So why are they different than when I print them or when a printing shop prints them? There are probably multiple reasons. So first of all, with my phone and with my computer, the images are backlit. You know, the light comes from behind. And then it's the same media I prepare them with my Lightroom and then distribute them. They are in both cases on my computer. And then when you look at them, they are seen on a screen. So there's not a media, medium conversion happening. Um, then, of course, the different papers seem to affect uh, and, and they seem to sort of eat the blacks and eat the whites in a different way and leave their mark on a picture. I think the color conversion has a huge impact. That's also my experience now. Uh, you know, when we prepare our pictures on a computer, we use RGB, red, green, blue model, that's what computers use, or then my pictures, I typically scan them uh, as grayscale. But that's, those are not the models the printing shops use. They use what is called a CMYK, cyan, magenta, yellow key, that means black. And it's a different color scheme, and somehow my uh, red, green, blue or grayscale pictures need to be converted for the printing shop. And it's either done by me or the printing shop or us together. And that conversion seems to be one of the Achilles heels of this process. I thought that, you know, in this computer era, it should be trivial. If I send them an image, printing shop, they should be able to print it exactly as I want it. But it doesn't seem to be the case. So I wanted to understand this a little bit better and get a sort of um, hang of it and, and be able to control the printing process. Prepare my pictures in a way that when they come from a printing shop, they are what I want them to be. Because that hasn't been the experience in the past. So to experiment with this, I decided to create a zine. I call it a Vene zine. Vene is a boat in Finnish, so it's a little zine, little booklet, full of my boat pictures. Um, and as a learning experience, I wanted to try everything myself. So, um, first of all, 
I took some inspiration from this zine that was given me by Daniel Zalensky, who came to visit me, you know, a few weeks ago, a few months ago. He has some pictures here, really nice pictures. And, and this is actually a, a zine created by group 6x6. Six it's an online community that has published a couple of these zines with selected pictures. So I thought this is a nice format. I will. I like the square format and I like the size of it. So this was my inspiration. I wanted to improve this a little bit. So I wanted to have a proper book sort of cover with the, with the really like edgy back. And then I wanted to make the cover especially a little bit more grandiose and shiny and then I I wanted to select the best possible paper. So I started with as simple tools as I could find and I just uh, chose to use Google Slides to get started with. I created a mock-up on a Google Slide by adding uh, what looks like my final product as a slide background. So then when I started to drop pictures on this background, then it started to immediately look a little bit like this book. That was important to me. I don't have the imagination to imagine this book. I need to see it. And then dropping pictures on this initial design was extremely satisfying and it allowed me to very easily and in a very light way to control what's going to go inside of the zine, inside of my book. So here I also decided how many pages I will have, but I knew that this might change depending on the print shop that I select. I knew already that you know you need to have certain numbers of pages, like you can't have 33 pages, there needs to be even number and typically divided by four. I was aiming at somewhere around 42, 48 pages. Okay, now I had my initial design ready in Google Slides. I knew how many pages, which pictures to use, what is the size of the zine and all those things. And I decided that I want to make uh, 50 copies of that zine. Now I needed to select the print shop. And I went online and looked at a couple of possibilities. Blurb uh, seems to be widely used. They have a nice website where you can upload your PDF document of the, whatever you are printing. And then um, even design it using their tools. And then they print it for you and they, they you know, that's the way to go. I entered the information to their website and look at the price and it would have been almost $800 plus taxes plus shipping. So that would have been more than $1,000 to get my zines printed with the Blurb logo on top. And to get rid of that logo, which I obviously would not like to have there, I would have need to pay $200 more. So well over 1,000 euros or dollars to get my 50 copies printed. I thought that was too much. I wanted to look at some other alternatives and I stumbled upon Print24. I have no affiliation with this printing shop. I don't know anybody here. But they seem to have, you know, fairly similar way of conducting their business as Blurb does. Maybe a poor man's version of Blurb. Um, and I contacted them and asked them a quote. No, actually, I think they had an automatic tool to give me the quote. Yeah, the same way Blurb has. And it was less than 300 with my characteristics and my specifications. So I thought, let me try this. I, I sent them an email and they kindly sent me a package, a physical package of, you know, how to do the, the whatever I want to print, and even more importantly, a thick booklet of all their paper and printing choices. You know, there's a, there's a page, each and every page of this booklet is different, and it shows you the kind of paper 
that you can select the, the surface and something printed on it and then the actual paper. You, you can feel it and you can look at it. I found this really beneficial because I don't know anything about printing and anything about this paper. So I could take my time and look at what's the difference, difference between 100 grams and then say 170 grams of paper. What's the difference between matte and semi-matte and full glossy paper? And I selected the kind of paper I wanted for the cover and then what I wanted for the internal inside pages. And this was really helpful. Um, then they also had, of course, information about how to prepare the file for printing. They wanted a PDF file with certain specifications and then they also wanted me to sort of include the CMYK, the conversion information to that file. Um, select, you know, but they had all the information there. So that was fairly simple to do. To prepare my final PDF file, I chose to use Adobe's InDesign. I never used that before and they had a seven day trial period for me to try it out before I need to start to pay about 20 euros per month for the license. So I used that seven day period to get my work done for free. It was fairly simple. Um, uh, there are probably much better uh, YouTube videos about how to use InDesign, so I, I won't be bothering you with that. It was easy to use and I created the final files for print for 24 printing service. I uploaded the file and they had some kind of an automatic way to first process it and it came back immediately saying you need to fix these couple of things. Bleeds, you know, how much of extra space you need to leave around the page to get it printed correctly and some other means, uh, some other things that were incorrect in my initial, because I'm doing this for the first time. And after a couple of rounds, um, I got it right. And they said they're going to make me a PDF file now, digital proof where they push my original PDF file through their printing process system so that on the screen I could look at the final uh, print as it would appear on the paper. It's not like physical proofs. I didn't get anything sent over a regular mail, but I got this digital proof. And I was a little bit disappointed that, yeah, how can this work? I would like to see a physical proof. But that turned out to be an excellent way to do it because the minute I got the first files I noticed that the same problem I had experienced earlier is very visible. All my pictures are too dark, they are too muddy, I lose all the, the sort of nuances at the darker side of my pictures. And that was already vis visible in the PDF file that they sent me. I went over all the pictures and opened the shadows, made them brighter, created the new PDF file and uploaded it to their service. Got the proofs back, did that a few times until I was really satisfied with the proofs that they sent me back. And then I gave them a permission to start printing. So I was really excited. Uh, it took them a week to get the print sent to me or uh, with the DHL or some other UPS, I, I don't know, some, some of those services, they appeared on my front door. I was really excited. Let me show you what I got. <laughs> Here it is, you know. This was the inspiration, Daniel's, and this is mine. It's so slightly bigger. I got the square back and I like the material <laughs> much better because it's chosen by me. And I look at the pictures and I, immedi I immediately see that the problem I had earlier, meaning muddy, dark pictures, it's now gone. The pictures look exactly the way I want. I'm so happy. But then I noticed that almost each and every page has a horizontal scratch or scratches to them. 
it's almost like the print head or I don't know how they print this had had some dirt on it or something that has scratched all the pages not all the pages but like 90 percent so I'm so disappointed I contact the printing shop and I say yeah I like everything else but you know there can't be scratches on these pages they come back to me immediately like within an hour or so and apologizing and asking my permission to make another run can we try again this time we make it right and I said sure let's let's try again and then within a few days a new box arrives and of course I'm really eager to see the result and here we go and I immediately look at the scratches are there any yeah I I really don't see any difference to the to the shipment that I got scratches all over the place hmm Maybe I should have gone with Plurp or somebody. Is this the, what makes the price difference here? I contact them again and I ask, like, are you going to give me my money back or what are we going to do? And then say, they say that we'd like to try again. Let us try again. And I thought, let's do it. Like, this is a learning process for me. So I give a permission to give them one more try. And then they start the printing and in a few days a new box arrives and I'm really excited are we gonna have some scratches on my prints and I look at the pictures and try to find the scratches no scratches this time nothing it is a Barely smooth, perfect pictures. But then I noticed that on the front page, the cover page, there's some dirt. Is this the only copy with dirt? I'll take another copy. No, the same thing. Oh, you know, this kind of black lines here. And then I notice another thing. Some pages have a black, it's not really a scratch, but it's like a vertical muddy line at the very left side of each and every opening. On some pages it's more visible, but then in some pages it's less visible, but here it is. It didn't happen in the earlier boxes, but it happened this time. So now they've fix the scratching thingy but now they introduced dirty front pages and this muddy vertical lines yeah i contacted them again i said like it's probably not happening like then i asked should i change the paper to something else did i chose a paper that is difficult to print and then they said like can we try one more time and I said, yeah, why not? <laughs> One more time. At least now winter is coming. I have a plenty of things to burn in my, in my fireplace to keep my house warm after this episode. So fourth time in a few days, yet another box arrives. And really, I'm not expecting a lot at this time. And I open it and I'm... <laughs> I don't know what to expect. First page. Clean. No longer these black marks I had in my previous. No muddy lines at the left hand side of the openings and no scratches these are perfect these are exactly what I wanted them to be I like the cover it's like silky smooth 
I like the back. It looks really sharp and professional. I like the pictures. They turn out to be really sort of... Um, they pop. They are really nice. Uh, it's partially because of this paper. This really feels classy and and I'm so happy. The amazing thing is now that if I look at these pictures in the file that I prepared for the printing, these are far too bright and the shadows are far too open. But in the printed media they are exactly what I wanted. Thanks to that forth and back trialing with the printing shop to get them right. And I think that's something that you need to do, otherwise you won't get this right. Absolutely ecstatic about this. I mean, these are so cool and, and I really like the print results and I also kind of like this booklet. I made it absolutely minimum with the really minimum texts no page numbers because I hate page numbers and no text, no labeling on the images and just in the end I promise that there are only 50 of these. I got two hundreds of them now but these three boxes I'm gonna burn and this 50 is going to remain. <laughs> so what are my learnings? I mean this was really a learning exercise for me. Um, it takes a lot of effort to create a zine, though if you really want it the way you want. I was surprised to see the difference between the uh, material on the screen and then the printed image. And it sort of confirms my earlier experience that to print your pictures they need to be prepared in a certain way. I don't have the formula, I don't have the magic number how much brighter you need to make, but I got a hunch now and next time I'm gonna print something I know that I'm gonna get closer to the final result now that I was before thanks to this experience. It was so much fun to compose this and using Google Slides just to throw around pictures and create this, you know, take my time and create this concept. That was an excellent tool for that. Thanks for Google. I mean, it's I gladly exchange you spying on me and getting my personal information for an exchange for those kind of free tools. Keep on spying on me, sending me commercial and advertisements. If you can provide me tools like that, I'm happy to. You know, seems like a fair trade. And then I liked InDesign too. Next time I'm going to do something like this, I will pay the proper license. It was easy to use, it was spot on, and at least with this print shop, um, seemed to produce exactly what they wanted. And then last but not least, uh, I guess when you go printing something, you need to be prepared for a couple of runs and a couple of disappointments. But um, if you can get a guarantee of a happy customer or them doing it as long as you want to get the final results. Why not? Can I recommend this print shop? Based on my experience, yes, I can. I got nice results, so this is not a commercial. They don't pay me anything, but um, I don't know why this happened, but this one was perfect. <laughs> so now let's have a little break here. I'll prepare something now to make these available for you. I want you to get some of these also if you want. Let me see what I can do with that. Hold on a second. This we're gonna keep. And these we are not gonna keep. Okay, now I made an eBay listing so you can find my Venezine on eBay and you can go and buy yourself one. Uh, I put 20 on, of them online, let's see if that's enough or do we need more. Um, before you say anything about the price um, and calculate that now Ari is making 
a few dollars here in between. That's not entirely true. I tried to calculate it. You know, first of all, I ship it from Finland and all shipping is on me. Then there's a money conversion that eBay takes and then finally packaging and shipping and then all those costs. So I pretty much <laughs> should break even with this one. Uh, nobody makes money with photography nowadays. It's, it's all about love of the game. <laughs> but hey, check out from the description page the link and go and buy a zine. Thanks for watching. Next time, definitely something else. See you around. Mm -hmm.